know, the other day I came out and I was throwing artificials and I almost got onto an inshore grand slam. I caught a tarpon, a trout, a snook, I was just missing that redfish and just couldn't get them to eat, even though I saw a lot of them. So today we're back and we got a well full of live mullet. We're gonna see if we can catch some big snook and some big reds and maybe we'll find a tarpon and trout while we're at too, but big snook and big red sight casting with live bait is the game plan. We're cruising the dock line, looking for big snuff and big reds. We've moved to a mangrove line and I've actually switched over to my 4,000 size spinning rod here. Something that is a little more appropriate size for throwing these finger mullet. Now, if we see a fish that's like over 34, we'll be having our work cut out for us. So this will be a lot more fun to catch those fish in the uh, upper 20s, low 30s type of deal. It'll be a little easier to flick this mullet around on a spinning rod this size than the big mag heavy stick we're just going to cruise down this mangrove line real slow keeping our eyes peeled for reds and snooks but in the meantime blind casting up into pockets we're letting them just soak in the pocket for a moment and we'll kind of slowly pull them out oh i might have got dunkied there i did 100 percent doink already Cruising down the mangrove line, that was quick. Nice little snook. Beautiful, that's how it's supposed to happen right there, friends. Three flips in, letting that mullet just swim down the mangrove line, and that was just a tiny, tiny doop, a tick like that, and snuck him up and scarfed her. That seriously could not have played out better right there. Never even saw that fish. And it's kind of why we're mixing blind casting in while we're uh, sight fishing. Like I'm really not gonna be looking all that much at my mullet while he's out there. I'm gonna be keeping my eyes peeled looking around. Like I never saw that snook and he just came out and boom, blanked it. Now hopefully, one of those will turn into about a 30 inch snook, maybe a 30 inch redhead. We'll be in proper business. When you're working on a mangrove line and you have like kind of pretty uniform cover, where there, you know there's pockets in it, but it's not like a ton of variation, and then you get a deeper push in like this. There, there should be a fish hanging out in there. And we're gonna kind of slowly make our approach up to this pocket here and we'll whip our mullet way up in there and see if there's maybe a red or snook hanging inside there. I like, really honestly, I like fishing everything in a mangrove line, but areas like this are where you really could spend a lot of time like trying to target a fish and even waiting for fish to come in and out of. Cause it's got a nice flat area. And so a lot of times these fish might just cut directly across here and you'll spot snook or red just moving through the flats that you normally wouldn't see because they'd be tucked traveling along the mangrove line but those make a nice cut across and you'll see them hang oh there's a big snook right here the big snook and he's right behind my mullet did they eat him oh my gosh these manatees are making noises that is disturbing i've never heard that before Oh, 
Oh my god. Oh, nice snook out of the groves right there. He hammered that freaking mullet. Holy crap, that was sick. Gosh, what a freaking fired up little fish, man. Whoo, pop the hook, flipping them in. It has been a slow morning, so even a little 17, 15 inch snook like that is welcome today. It has been about an hour since we caught that first, well, probably two hours since we caught that first fish. So, whew, getting back on track. My mole just got eaten. That was so weird. What is that? It's gotta be a red, right? That was like the strange thing of all time. I don't know how much we'll be seeing there because my GoPro is kind of being weird, but stud trout right there. I was letting the mullet free line across the flats and he just came up and hammered it within seconds of it being out there. Big snook from very far away. Oh, there he is. Nice. Oh, my. How? How do you throw that? All right, we're gonna abandon the uh, live mullet for a second and throw just a straight white fluke around and see if we can hook a tarp in or maybe a snook will come in and hit it. This is on a heavy hammer. It's a hook made by uh, Ketchka that you can get on Shop Carl's. I'll leave a link down for it below. Super stout hook. got swung on on the fluke. Little snook. I honestly like want this to be quiet. I don't want to scare any big fish if there's some big fish back here. It's like it's like a 15 inch snook. Cause I know there's some tarpon in here. So I'm literally gonna try to like ever so quietly flip them in. Off you go. Straight up tailing redfish right here, coming off the flat. Oh, come on, he's a good red. I'm drifting right on top of him though. Oh, come on, he might still eat, he might still eat. Damn it. Alrighty, what I've rigged up here is a Sakoshi bug on a Ned rig. And now this is a bait and the Ned rig and both get off Carl's bait and tackle down below. And it's kind of a weird little combo that I've been using a lot lately in the salt water and having a lot of success with it. I think it just resembles a weird little shrimp or a crab or something good, you know, and I've been doing very very well on it the other day i came out with a uh, nat strikel 
and him and I were filming a video at the Mystery Tackle Box for their channel. And I was throwing this little net ring around and I caught a sheep's head, a croaker, a um, handful of snook, a trout. It's like a ton, a ton of weird stuff. So I'm excited to throw it around here and see if maybe we can connect with like a redfish or a black drum or something like that. It'd be really cool. Saw a nice sheep's head off this piling here. Oh! Sheep's head on the Sakoshi bug. Oh, yeah. No, okay. There you go. All right. Didn't get to show him off the big camera. It was not the sheep's head I was looking at. There was one that was like probably 14, 15 inches long. And he must have had that little, ooh, blow up right there. Little feller sticking right underneath him. And he thumped it down there. Just dead sticking the Sakoshi bug on the bottom. That's so funny. I was hoping we'd catch one of those. I pulled outside in the main river where it's pretty windy. At least it's calmed down a considerable amount since this afternoon when I was fishing earlier and it was freaking two foot rollers out here. The sun is starting to make its way down. We've got about an hour, hour and a half to fish. Throwing top water. And about five casts in or I got blown up on. So that's a good sign. Seemed like a small trout maybe, but uh, we're just throwing up to a big fat grass head here that's like a big grass pile up and we're gonna work this little top water off and hopefully connect with a big red. Oh, there's a fish. What are we into? Guys, a top water bite might be on. This is, might be what I need to rejuvenate my freaking soul here. Oh my gosh, all right. Soul feeling less rejuvenated. 